from Hawaii. This is Quiet Tibetan Buddhist Dharma Center. Kagyu Tupton Cho Ling is the name. And we present this program every um, Thursday night, 6 to 8, 8 o'clock. And it is recorded. I'm Lama Tashi, and tonight we're going to do meditation. You can walk. We're going to do meditation practice. Um, using the Tibetan Buddhist shamanistic tradition of Lamaism. And the practices we're going to perform tonight, they're called pujas. Puja is a Sanskrit word for offering. So everything that we do, are doing is an offering. For who? For the benefit of all other sentient beings. Sentient beings being animals, humans, and spirits. And so the practice is all about healing. Sutra Tantra and the practice of Mahamudra, which is the, we say, <clears throat> non judgmental nature of mind. So when we do these practices, it's to bring our body, speech, and mind together. And that way we function uh, very powerfully. And also to transform the body, speech, and mind into three states. Clarity, insight, and power. These three qualities. In order to do this, we must take refuge. Refuge in our own true nature, which is the mind's, we say, non-judgmental nature. And together with the compassion for all sentient beings by realizing that nature, we help to alleviate pain and suffering, physically, mentally, emotionally, and most importantly, spiritually. We start with the altruistic motivation, which is unique in the tradition of Tibetan Buddhism. And that is simply the, everything we do is for the benefit of all other living beings. And we start with the, this motivation, and then that motivation is the theme of all the sutra practices, tantric practices, and the practice of Mahamudra called Mind of Bliss, or Dzogchen. In order to attain enlightenment for ourselves and limitless sentient beings, our mothers, we now, all together, take refuge and offer prostration. And I'm going to chant that in Sanskrit, and then we'll do the refuge prayer and bodhicitta prayer in Sanskrit. Dagdang yowa namke dagdang yamte sanchan tamche du dine junte jisi jengshu ningpo lachi pibardu. Now we chant the refuge. Called in Lama Dampa Nam La Chapsu Chiyo. Yera Choko Ni Laso Nam La Chapsu Chiyo. Sanje Chong Dende Nam La Chapsu Chiyo. Dante Chur Nam La Chapsu Chiyo. Bao te gen du nam la chak su chi yo. Bao ho gan ro jo jo su me. Sho re she ki shen dang gen pa. Nam la chak su chi yo. San jay cho dang cho ki cho nam la ten chu. Bardu Yagni Chapsu Chi Nagi Jen So Chi Pe So Nagi Jolang Ben Che Sang Che Chu In order in English, in we go for refuge to all the glorious holy lamas, we go for refuge to all the idioms, the deities gathered in our mandalas. We go for refuge to all the Buddhas, those who are mind and gone beyond. 
we go for refuge to all this supreme Dharma. We go for refuge to all the noble Sangha. We go for refuge to all the Dakas and Dakinis who are the protectors and defenders of the Dharma, all possessing the eye of transcending awareness. To the Buddha, Dharma, and this supreme assembly, we go for refuge until enlightenment. May I, through merit gain from practicing the six bodhisattva disciplines, accomplish Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. These, <clears throat> this refuge in bodhicitta prayer, together with the altruistic motivation that we started with, is the theme, is the essence of all sutra and tantra practice. So if you're doing sutra practice, which means the reading of texts and the six um, types of spiritual practices combined, that is supported by the three jewels, which is the Buddha Dharma Sangha, and then transmitted by the Lama deities and protectors. So this is an oral transmission, and that makes it um, available to all living beings. When we say all living beings, <clears throat> of course we know that on this planet the living beings are animals and humans. Those are the sentient beings that we know. And uh, also from the very core of the planet to as far as you can imagine throughout space, there are spirits. Now, the spirit world is very important because integrated into our practice, it promotes good health. They promote good health. And how that works is by chanting the refuge bodhicitta and the altruistic motivation in Sanskrit, you are conveying to the spirit world that you're a friend. Yeah, but more than that, they, they've been hearing this for thousands of years since, at least from Shakyamuni Buddha 2,600 years ago up to now. And so when you, when you say these words in Sanskrit, they're attracted. That's, that's the essence of the language. But the Sanskrit language itself is based on how things resonate particles, and patterns. And with this re resonation, it's the same with everything else, like we say the mineral life, the plant life, um, the planetary, solar system life, the galaxy life, all of that has a resonating factor, a sound. And that makes it um, appropriate. Then, communicating in the language which the Sanskrit language culturally is embedded in, for instance, Tibetan or the Indian of India, those um, still contain their way of speaking, but when it comes to the Dharma, they have to have this because they don't have all the words in their language or their culture that we are using, for instance, chanting the altruistic motivation and the refuge and the six disciplines of the bodhisattva path called bodhicitta. Now speaking of bodhicitta, which means Buddha mind, there are two flavors. One is relative bodhicitta. This is how we alleviate the suffering and communicate on the level that all of us exist in, which they call Samsara, we call the drama world. And that's so you can understand the obstacle to the other form of bodhicitta, which is called the ultimate bodhicitta, which is your natural mind. Now, both of these are mind, but we're, we're stuck, we humans, sentient beings, animals, spirit, are stuck in the drama world. But in the same mind's essence is this other nature of mind that 
doesn't do that. And that's where the dharma, word dharma comes in. So actually there's two dharmas. There's the relative dharma, which we all know and are aware of. And then there's the ultimate dharma, which you need to learn. And it's already innate in your consciousness. You cannot find it out here. You can, you can get a feeling about it by being involved with the natural world through the elements. You can get a feeling about it through various experiences. But in order to really connect to it, you have to do practice. And that practice has to be transmitted orally with the proper instructions according to your own propensities, <laughs> tendency. Now, when it comes to tendencies, we're talking about karma. And karma, as we know, <coughs> is the activity of body, what you, what you do, your activity, speech, what you say, and mind, what you think. And those, those three are where the tendencies arise that we carry from one lifetime to, a, to the next lifetime. And some, some people from previous lives have very, very nice tendencies. <laughs> and then some people, not so nice. That is the difference of what we call karma. So we have, some people have mixed karma. They have good tendencies and they have bad tendencies, negative tendencies. Well, that's most of it. But some is extreme one way or the other. And they can be arrived, they can arrive in the same family. They can be twins but one twin has all the may have all the negative tendencies and the other twin may have all the positive same family same conditioning same mom and dad and so forth so that explains karma but the problem with it is people don't believe the karma they want to believe superstitiously or base it on somebody else's ideas um, books or whatever, but it's still, every one of us knows, what goes around comes around. <laughs> and if you don't believe that, you're in deep trouble. Because then you think you can act however you want and be harmful to yourself, harmful to others, and harmful to the environment. Which is the predicament which we find ourselves in the human condition on this planet in today. And so, here we are. You can't change that, but you can change your mind. And in changing your mind, you can influence that. Because out here is a shared program. It's kind of like your computer. What you put into your computer, your software, your algorithms, your codes, that's what it's going to produce. Well, this is the same out here. When I say out here, in space, around it in the natural world. And so, according to how we think, say, and do things, we can greatly influence what goes on around us in this natural world. And so, most of today, most of the humans are very, very distracted, is a good word. <laughs> distracted. And now we have the electronic age of computers, cell phones, TVs, etc. Well, that's more distraction. But more than that, it's more disturbing. It's not just distracting, it's distorting. Because we put our emotional program into these items. And it's not healthy. And it's not healthy for us individually, collectively, or for the environment. So, when we practice, we start with the nature of the universe. Elements. And the one most important to us is air. <laughs> Each breath is so important, because without that next breath, you exit the body. 
So air. But in the air are water, warmth, we call fire, radiation, earth, and it takes up space. So we, we humans, must harmonize our physical existence, not just our mental program, our physical situation, to be in harmony with the nature, the natural world around us, on those with those five elements. And that is the medicinal application of what we are doing. And we can apply that physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. Now the problem with the emotions is they're a habit based on judgment and they come from thinking. And the sensual perceptions fed into your body from the outer world's five elements, everything that exists. For instance, your mother created you out of these five elements, contrary to all religious belief. <laughs> the matriarchal system has been in place and it works. And that's how we get here. That's how we exist. And with the loving kindness and compassion of the mother, in the animal world and human world, we survive. We start to mature. And that's the evolutionary process that's been going on for thousands of years up until this so-called industrial age. Now we want to use these same five elements for healing like they do in all healing tradition. And tonight we're going to do what is called the five element healing practice. And it does, it, it's not just, I, it's not just in Tibetan Buddhism. Sufis have it, American Indians have it, Hawaiians have it, Hindus have it. You know I mean? It's been around for a long time, Chinese with Tai Chi, Quan, and so forth. But in the Tibetan tradition, these five elements, the natural world, are presented in such a way that you get to find the other nature of your consciousness, which is similar to space, it has this quality. It is, it is to say it's space is not defining it, because you can't define it, but it's like space. And when we do these five elements practice, which I've charted on this sheet, which most of you have, and connected to the five inner apps of ultimate awareness, we take the five elements and create symbols. And for instance, this six-sided cube is the earth element. And no matter which five of these, for instance, water is a blue sphere, fire is a red pyramid, air is a half green sphere, and space has a symbol of a round sphere similar to the water, but it's white. Tonight we're going to use the earth symbol. Now the way we do this meditation with this symbol is exactly the, we'll do it the same way with these other fours. Up to you which one you choose, but you, they're, they're inseparable. But emphasizing the earth element emphasizes that element's harmony in your body with outside earth element, like minerals, like the planet, and so forth. So, we're going to do the five elements healing practice. And it's good to have your body positioned with the back straight, the head slightly tilted a little bit forward. You could do this laying down, standing up, or walking, but to start with the city, on a, in a chair, on a chair or on a cushion. Hands comfortable, on your knees or in your lap. Mouth closed to start with, tongue resting against the palate. Then you position your eyes to the space, two feet in front, which holds energy. And you want to start with this eyes maybe half closed, kind of relaxed, and a soft gaze. In other words, you don't you don't do it like 
wide open. It's too much light energy coming in. So soften it. And then allow that program coming into your eyes to register with the two inner um, organs here, the pituitary and the pineal gland, which bring the energy of central perceptions together in the form of light and cause hormonal secretions through your body which may which are good which are healthy so do that back straight head tilted hands comfortable mouth closed eyes relaxed gaze in front feel that Feel the positioning that is called Budra position. Then connect to the air element with your breath. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, diaphragm expanding. Exhale, diaphragm contracting. So you're breathing down into your lower or mid abdomen. Next, connect your mental process with this focus on the breath. And to do that, you simply imagine, we say visualize, the air coming in as white light filling your lung. The middle breath, the absorption breath of the energy of what you are inhaling, is passed through the body and you visualize red light flashing through your entire form. Then a combination of these two together is exhaled out the nose as blue light to space. Inhale white light, fill your lungs. Absorption breath, red light through the body. Exhale out the nose, blue light to space. Now, as you breathe with this code, you start to feel peaceful. It's called the state of calm abiding. And secondly, because you are focusing and using your imagination together, you start to withdraw from work, the day's worldly activities. Once you feel this settling, this state of calmness, then take your focus off the breath. Combine the three lights and bring that energy. From now on, everything we do is an energy, energetic program. Combine those three lights into a particle as fine as an atom, a very tiny particle that you imagine to exist in the center of your chest, in the center of your body. And with this 
you simply connect to the radiance, radiance of the boundless fabric of space. And the trick is, is to keep your focus present in time. Don't let it cognize past or go future. Just now. Be present. Contemplate energy as space and light. Then, with your imagination focusing on that, again, on that particle, expand it to a small, clear sphere, a small sphere of clear light. And by doing this, you move from the first dimension of space to our third dimension of our phenomenal world. The energy itself is the second dimension. Then once you have this small sphere, visualize it to grow until it forms a golden or yellow cube of light. Like the one I'm showing you, but no bigger than your thumbnail in the center of your chest. And you are creating a healing energy field. It's called a chakra. It started with the particle and now it's this symbol of earth, the six-sided yellow sphere of light. Then with your imagination, see it move out in front of your chest and up before your eyes in the position you were gazing, two feet in front. And with that energy program, you have started the healing process of this meditation. Keeping your focus and imagination together, expand that sphere in front of your eyes until you can see it as big as the room you're sitting in, or at least as big as it encloses your body. It's good to give it some space. That's its essence. And feel the full, act, full effect of the elements through this healing symbol labeled Earth, emphasizing the Earth element by the code of the yellow light and its shape. Then share it by focusing it visualizing it to expand to a size large enough to enclose this island of Kauai, which is about 35 miles across, inside, complete with surrounding ocean, or enclosing the town or area where you're practicing. Then the next step is to expand it in size to completely enclose Mother Earth, including her atmosphere. Applying it to all the beings in that area.
expanded in size to completely enclose our solar system, all the planets and the sun inside. The next step expanded to completely enclose our spiral disc-shaped galaxy. They call it the Milky Way. And then move beyond the boundaries of your conceptual mind by expanding it to the boundless limits of space. And at, at this point, you just contemplate space. No symbol. No color necessary. Just relax in the nature of your own mind and its all pervasive nature. And this dimension is ultimate awareness. Which is the nature of the universe. Then return from that dimension Again, visualizing the six-sided cube labeled Earth to enclose our spiral galaxy. Shrink it in size to just enclose our solar system. Smaller yet to just enclose Mother Earth. Then again to the area where you live inside your neighborhood. Then tinier and tinier until you can just see your physical form enclosed in this symbol. Receiving the full benefit of the psychic healing energy of the life force of this universe. Then to finish, again bring it to its original small size, arm's length in front of your eye. Visualize it move to chest level and into your heart chakra. Condense it in size until it's just a tiny sphere of clear light. Keep the shrinking process going until you're in space with the particle. Again, relax.
connecting to this dimension which is all pervasive of your own mind. Just relax, be present. Contemplate, ponder. Increasing your capacity to understand your own true nature. Then bring your awareness to in front of your eyes and expand it into your place of practice. And dedicate the virtue of this practice to all living beings and its results. And I'm going to have some water in all of it. So the question is it asked, what is energy? <laughs> well, that's a scientific dimension. That's a, we say, physics, dimension of being, physical. Energy is what the universe is composed of. And the science tells us that all of space is this energy program. And in this energy program, they break it down into two aspects. Dark energy and light energy. And they tell us that 95% of space is dark energy, or more, maybe 99%. They're guessing, of course. But whether it's light energy or dark energy, it's still energy. And all this energy appears as items, starting from the particle up to the biggest dimension of, say, a black hole or a galaxy or like that, which even increases to the point where they have what they call a nova, a supernova. So they have novas and supernovas. But these supernovas, when they go off, everything for trillions and trillions of light years disappears. <laughs> All the planets, all the galaxies, everything, poof. Wow. Well, you can say that's the dimension of the particle. Because it, it originated that way, went to that degree of energy, and then poof. Disappeared everything for, in every direction which is called voidment. So what is the nature of mind in the universe? It's this voidness. Now, that is the theme of the spatial aspects of the particle. And when we went beyond the galaxy, when we rested with the color code disappearing throughout the bottom of space. But we do that so that you can get a, a feeling of the power of the energy of your own mind. Not just your body, your mind, which is the body's control system. Mind is the body. And it's never beyond the natural dimension. And it is never supernatural. In fact, there is no such thing as supernatural except in the minds of a few human beings. Oops. <laughs> And when we step on toes of these few human beings with this, these pronouncements, we're not being unkind. We're just sharing that every single one of us has unlimited potential. 
And that unlimited potential is not only stored in the particle, in space, but in your consciousness. And sooner or later, you must bring the two together. Sooner or later, because we're a temporal existence. You know, we can't do everything at once. We have to do this and then this and then this and then, like we just did this meditation. Progress. If everything happened all at once, that wouldn't be too much fun. It's too fast. Like a supernova, which is unfathomable. I mean, you can take pictures of it through our telescope. You can actually see this phenomenon. But when you enter into this capacity in your mind, you are increasing a quality of consciousness that is associated with energy called power. And all of this, to some degree or another, if we're not insane, want power. You know, to get up in the morning and have our first coffee and take a poop and all of that. But power, on its own, is dangerous. And you can see that unleashed in the world today. It's called global warming. Believe, not believe, you know. We have leaders that say it's a crock, but easy to see. And that dimension of power without insight, without some kind of heartfelt compassion, concern, is deadly. It's not just dangerous. It can create a situation equal to the supernova. It's called extinction. <laughs> and it's not necessary. For us on this planet, it's not necessary. We don't have to do that. We've been around this planet with our present state of consciousness, 50, 100,000, some say 200,000 years, whatever. But by using this dimension of being, you're at least energizing your own situation. And because it's presented as a form of shamanism, you can change with this power what's going on around you. Not just inside you, which is very important. What you eat, what you think, exercise, what you do. That's all very important. But out here, there's no separation. This mind, this heart consciousness, whatever you want to call it, is totally interconnected to every being in the entire universe. There's no such thing as separation. Inside, outside can exist separate. The subject and the object and the energy going on between it, those three can't exist separately. You can say that they're separate, but they're not separate. And you must realize that. And meditation is the way you realize that. And then you can take the meditation formal session, which we just did with the healing practice, present it to others, or use it in, I use it in gardening. You see, interaction with the natural world, I have orchards around my house, I have to dig in the earth, worms and everything. And it, it, it relieves me of a lot of labor energetic labor, those things I just mentioned start to work on their own. I don't have to do a lot of stuff. And what I do is good for me because it keeps me body healthy. Plus, I think there's a benefit. The energy turns into food and fruit and all kinds of smells and, you know, nice stuff. And, Get to use it. If, if there's no good result, you're wasting your energy. <laughs> okay? And money shouldn't be the bottom line. Wealth is important, but it's to be shared. It has to be shared with nature and everybody else. 
So philanthropy is compassion. Here for us, our form of compassion, philanthropy, is spiritual. Because we're taking compassion, power, and insight, and it's the basis of the practice from the moment you take refuge until you finish with the dedication that everything you're doing is for everybody else in the environment. Wow, nobody does that. We do that, but why doesn't everybody do that? But all we can do is set a good example and get the result. Eat the fruit. And this five element practice, there's no patent on it. You know, like I said, all the cultures of the planet have been doing this for thousands of years using these elemental healings. My lovely wife, Abby, she uses it in massage and, and <clears throat> medicinal remedies, herbs and food, which are medicine. And that's just one modality. And all of that kind of energetic healing is only symptomatic. No matter what form of healing anybody's doing on the practice day, it is symptomatic medicine. And that means you're treating the symptoms and not the cause. Wow. What's the cause? <laughs> Us. We're the cause. We're the cause emotionally of disease. We're the cause emotionally of healing. And that's why compassion and developing insight into this other nature of your consciousness is so spiritual, so important. Because it's affecting the spirit world, it's affecting the animal world, and it's affecting our human condition. So we move to the next dimension of dealing with the cause by using the energy of the emotion. And we start with anger. The worst affliction of the human condition starts with a little thing called aversion. And that starts simply with the judgmental mind of saying something is bad <laughs> or negative or harmful. As soon as you say that, beep, connected with that judgment is aversion. Now what happens with this emotional program that we've instilled in our mind over time, and we've all been doing this, and we are doing it, is it escalates. It's kind of like when you drop a stone in the pond, it starts out as a little ripple, and the ripple across the pond. Aversion escalates into anger. Anger starts this pituitary pineal gland system to put a hormone through your body that is deadly. It causes you to age really fast. Not only that, it jams up in the energy channels of the body. And worst of all, it affects your relationship to the natural world and to everybody in it, everything in it. So what we want to do is deal with this emotion, whether it be anger or whatever. It's energy. And since it doesn't exist, use that as the basis of the dealing with it. Anger is an invention based on judgment, based on aversion. Now we go to another emotion that caused the human race to proliferate to where we have almost 8 billion humans. Attachment. Now, attachment does the same thing as the anger, but it's not so easy to get a handle on because we've judged it good. These things that we, like this computer, good. You know, my cell phone, good. My TV, good. Each other, the ones we like, of course, good. But that does the same thing as the anger. 
it escalates into desire, which is a money-making product. <laughs> Ask the perfume industry. Desire. Now, desire escalates to lust. Ooh, what? That means you never get enough. That's the definition of lust. Lust escalates to greed that you not only never get enough, you're not going to share it with anybody else. <laughs> Very, mm. Now, I'm, not, I'm being judgmental here. So right away I'm in trouble because I'm explaining these emotions that the problem is the judgment, not the emotion. But every emotional energy, whether it be desire, anger, jealousy, pride, arrogance, which was, we got to watch out for that in Tibetan Buddhism because we get going really good with this stuff and we think we're better than anybody else. Ooh. That can screw up your future worse than anything. Arrogance. And you can see that's a big problem with our political, religious, military, corporate world. But, to deal with this, take one emotion. The one you think you have the worst problem. Maybe it's fear, anxiety, depression, those, those are extreme. Or maybe you recognize that you're really an arrogant critter. Maybe you recognize or you have an anger problem. Isolate it. And all you have to do, and this is way too easy, so it's hard. <laughs> it sounds easy, but it's hard. All you do is you sit like we have been, and you isolate the feeling of the anger, but no subject. No I, no me. Take the self out of it. Take the idea of a soul, an entity, out of it. And then take the object that may be causing the anger for you and remove it. And just take the energy of the emotion. And in anger, you will find, and this is its antidote, that it's over <laughs> Anybody who walks into your anger field, they're going to get it. They're going to get slammed. There's no give or take anger. Aversion, a little bit. If you just isolate it and you look at it, it goes away, it disappears. That shows you that it's nothing whatsoever to begin with, but you have this fix, you fixate. It's like drugs, it's a, got you. <laughs> but when it goes away, you can relax. Maybe it only goes away for one second. Or maybe it goes away entirely. If it goes away entirely, then you're back to square one. <sighs> lack of stress, lack of harming your body, aging. Remember these two lambs? This is why we use this dimension, this imagination in these practices. But what about the concern for the well-being of others to go with this insight into this energy program? Ah, oh, now you need a symbol. And one of my students said, how come you use angels for symbol? I said, huh? Yeah, he, he's deity. It, like we got these statues on our shrine. And we have the Tonka, like the night we're going to do medicine. Goody, goody symbol. And I said, well, you must be Christian. Yeah, I was, I was raised Christian. Well, that's why your, your term for that is angels. But angels don't exist. They're made of light, right? They're an invention of your mind. Have you ever seen one, actually? No. But you've seen symbols of it, so you have this idea. Well, we're doing the same thing. But what we're going to do with this symbol is we're going to replace our body with it. And we're going to say that this symbol is totally altruistic according to what we did with the refuge parent. That is applied to every sentient being, but it's applied to the emotional program of the sentient being. 
So we're going to start tonight with the one that sums it all up in Tibetan Buddhism called the Medicine Buddha. Now Buddha means mature, a human being who is totally mature, like the Dalai Lama. Okay, he's a monk, but he's totally mature. That's kind of odd to be a monk, I'll tell you, I was one. But it, monk is just a state of spirituality. We have householders and we have yogis and yoginis. Those are the different kinds of spiritual. But when you use the medicine Buddha, you color it the color blue. Blue is an ideal healing energy. For instance, you notice we paint blue here. This wall light blue, this wall dark blue. So we're, we're energizing this room with this color color. Just like that, you're going to energize your mind. So your teacher, your guru, your inner one, your natural mind, that's the color code you're shining with. Then you put it in human form, however your teacher appears. Well, in Tibetan Buddhists, the most of them are monks, so we use the monk symbol with robe. In his right hand, he's holding the myrobalan fruit, which is heals everything in the body. It's an Indian herb. Abby puts it in my smoothies. That's <laughs> why I'm so energetic. <laughs> anyway, he's holding that. And then it, and <clears throat> the other hand is in the lap, meditation pose. And it's holding a bowl of light. They call it nectar. This is the nature of mind. This is energy, healing energy, which is what we're doing. So we have the physical application and the mental application. Then we start to use Sanskrit letters with a vibratory sound, which is the one we were breathing out of our nose, boom, in blue. So I'm showing you a blue boom, right? Now you should learn to draw this. It's simply a five tilted, kind of a five with a line. It's got a hook under it, and it's got a sun and moon above it, which is how we light up space, sun and the moon. That's how we're lighting up our mind. Or just a dot, a particle. This home is visualized in 3D in the center of your chest, in a five-color sphere of light, which represents the five-element practice we just did, and how it connects to your ultimate awareness, the applications to, excuse me, the remedies to your emotion. They're called, energy fields are called Buddha fields. So that five colored light in the home is placed right here, no bigger than your thumbnail. And if it gets, if it's bigger than that, it's okay. If it's smaller, that's okay. But you want to, start in the heart mind chakra energy system just like we did with the five elements and we're going to end in that dimension also so we start with that dimension we do the practice and we end in that dimension so it never goes beyond even with me the compassion part of this is this symbol is for everybody in the universe Everybody on this planet, all the animals in the ocean, in the land, in your body, everywhere, all the spirits in the entire universe, and all the billions of human beings on this planet and wherever they take birth. Human beings and animals can only take birth on a planet. And as you can see, there's unlimited planets out there. <laughs> okay, so now we show the back straight. Breathe. So we're starting again with the breath and the three code, color code. Inhale white light into your lungs. So this whole area of your body is energized. The absorption breath is that energy passed through every cell in your body is red light, fire, radiation, however you want to think of it. 
Those two together exhaled out the nose and blew like the space, which means everybody gets it. Then add the code of the sound. White light visualize filling your lungs to hear the sound OM. The universal sound of light itself, clarity, apply to your mind. The energy of that passes through the body for healing. It's the red light. You hear the sound ah. That's the code for energy. These two merge together with the breath. Come out your nose with blue light. It's healing energy for all sentient beings. Boom. H-U-M or H-U-N-G. Again, inhale white light, your home. Absorption breath is energy, red light, ah. Together out the nose is blue light, boom. Again, once you attain the state of calm abiding, settle. It's kind of like the mud settling out of the water to the bottom of the pond. Then, <clears throat> Bring those three color codes and the three sounds together again into your heart center, creating an energy chakra. And just hold your mind on the particle. Hold your focus on the smallest aspect of what appears. And apply that to boundless space. Then from that dimension, you visualize the particle expand to a small sphere of clear light, and then that expands to the five colored sphere inside marked with the foam, as I showed you. And just for the fun of it, we'll sound the foam. Inhale. Then send five colored light or the three colored light, your choice, out to the llama of the transmission of this medicine Buddha practice, which is the symbol incorporated in all the lamas of Tibetan Buddhism, all the men and teachers, women who are teachers of this Sutra Tantra tradition, the oral transmission. And see them gathered around you in vast numbers together with all of their angels, their symbols, their deities, peaceful, protected. Then they accept your light offering heart to heart, mind to mind, and return it into the home in your heart. With this exchange, this empowerment, you now visualize yourself as this symbol 
This is the tantric application of the medicine booth. So your ordinary body disappears and you become this blue healing symbol medicine booth. You're a hologram, three-dimensional, the home of your heart center, three-dimensional, give it some thickness. The five-color sphere, three-dimensional. And then mindfully think that this symbol covers all the healing remedies, both Dealing with cause and condition of all the animals, humans, and spirits in the entire universe. Everyone that exists as interconnected to you. This causes the heart mantra to appear, to appear around the home. It, it, it looks like this, but actually this way, kind of like a, the ring around Saturn, this way. And it starts off, Om Bikanji, Om Bikanji, Bikanji, Maha Bikanji, so I wrote that mantra here. Tadyata is a collection of all the wisdom energy of your support, of your refuge, and all the disciplines of the Bodhisattva. Om is the clarity of your own mind and body. Bikanzi is blue for your body, Bikanzi for your speech, and <clears throat> Maha Bikanji applied to your all pervasive mind. Rajda means healing or gathering health and wealth. Samangate means beyond emotionality into space of non judgmental mind, we call Buddha. Soha in Sanskrit, Svaha. Soha means always there, always expanding from your heart out, always increasing. So the hum is the creation sound, the mantra is the energy sound, and the all-pervasive light of these two from your heart is the healing for everyone, called the Dharma kind. Because your mind is all-pervasive like space, and you use that energy for this application. Dadyatma, Om, Bhikandi, Bhikandi, Maha Bhikandi, Rasta, Samurati, Soha. Dadyatma, Om, Bhikandi, Bhikandi, Maha Bhikandi, Rasta, Samurati, Soha.
Now some of the dialects, there's eight of them in Tibet, go like this. So this mantra is stationary inside the five color sphere, circling the home with the Tadyata and home in front, and the letters face outward. And the energy from this vibration of the mantra and the home fill your body with healing light, which is what the goal symbolizes, and blazes outward like to every floor, to every being throughout space, like the sun's energy does for our solar system, supports life. So you think that, you visualize that, home, here is medicine Buddha, mantra, and home filling your body, blazing like the sun, and it goes to everybody. All your mothers throughout space. Adyada Om Bhi Gandhi Bhi Gandhi Maha Bhi Gandhi Raja Sambhati Soha Adyada Om Bhi Gandhi Bhi Gandhi Maha Bhi Gandhi Raja Sambhati Soha Adyada Om Bhi Gandhi Bhi Gandhi Maha Bhi Gandhi Raja Sambhati Soha Tadya so, now, if you're collecting this for what they recommend the dose, is to say this mantra with this visualization 111, 111 times. 100,000, 111,000, 111, 111 times. 111, Okay. And that's why we have this counter for the mala. And you do one round of this on the mala, that's counted as a hundred. There's 108 bees, but they you give eight away. <laughs> so it's easy to keep track of. And if you're doing this to go to the full count of 111,111, then you want to keep track. A little diary or something. Also, they have attachments to go on the mala that help you keep track, but we, I don't have them. So, Tadyatha is a collection of what's out here, all the wisdom support. Own the energy of the universe coming in to you. The mantra, all the energy in your heart center, back out to everybody else. So uh, timelessly, always expanding, everybody gets it. Tadya the Om, Bhi Gandhi, Bhi Gandhi, Maha, Bhi Gandhi, Raja Sangrathe, Soha. Tadya the Om, Bhi Gandhi, Bhi Gandhi, Maha, Bhi Gandhi, Raja Sangrathe, Soha. Tadya the Om, Bhi Gandhi, Bhi Gandhi, Maha, Bhi Gandhi, Raja Sangrathe, Soha. Okay. 
Now, if you're doing it with a long count or with prostration, which is another way of doing it, then you can leave the Tadyaka on. Om Vigandhi Vigandhi Maha Vigandhi 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 Now, without the voice amplifying the patterning that's developing within the body with this mantra and visualization, and the same fell to the phone, just see the energy start here through your body and out. Your own mother receives it. One that created your body, whether you do it or not. Then all people that support you, everything you have, and somebody else made for you, gave for you. Yeah. Is this a moving mantra? No, stationary. Stationary. Okay. Yeah, and the letter space outward, which symbolizes the male application. When the letter space inward, that's the female application. So this, this is a way of training the mind for different deities. Inside, a little bit different inside, each deity. And then sometimes the mantra moves counterclockwise, and sometimes it moves clockwise. But this one's stationary. The Buddha mantras, they don't move. It's a, the Bodhisattva symbol, peaceful and protective, they move. They do, they do things. So this is space application, totality of space. And this is a five colored sphere called a Vajra. It has five points, the center and four on top. That's the element, that's the outer one. The bottom is Mirroring this is the inner application for the cause of all suffering, judgment, and emotion. So that has five categories, five out. This is your mind holding both in the middle. This is where you want to be. Don't attach to these, and don't attach to these. Just do it. <laughs> Practice. I'm <laughs> 
Now, at the end of your recitation and visualizing at home, you as the medicine Buddha and energy to everybody in the universe, at the end of that, that's called the creation of the being, creation day. Then you bring all that light energy and all sentient beings as the medicine Buddha into you. All these beings now mature Buddha. And all those infinite beings blend into you. Like rain blends into a ring. Then you as the medicine Buddha symbol disappear into the mantra. All those letters into the blue hymn. The creation sound is being the sun. All creation. Then that in a five color sphere of light shrinkets, starts in phases, falls. Becomes just a sphere of energy, pure light. When small, 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 Thought, body sensation, whatever, whatever is going on. Do not judge any of them. And be present. And let your mind take you past or future. Instant present. Timelessness. Relax. No meditation.
This phase of tantric practice <clears throat> is called the accomplishment stage. And it is absolutely necessary so that you overcome the experiences of the creation stage which arise <clears throat> to connect with the totality of the spatial aspect of your consciousness where everything exists on nothing whatsoever. <laughs> That's why it's called the accomplishment stage. But these two must work together. One is for the healing of the mind on its relative level, and the other is for reaching maturity on the ultimate level, which we call prudence, which is the symbol behind me. Then when you come out of this phase of the practice, you use a yidam post-meditation. It can be the medicine Buddha, but Tara and Chenrezi or some other of the deities would be appropriate also. And that's applied post-meditation into your relative world. Now we're going to do the practice of the white Tara, which <clears throat> is the symbol over my left shoulder. And when we do the Tara, we do basically the same format. We have a seed salvo, the deity, but in the Tara practice, peaceful deity practice, every individual being becomes the tar. So you're applying it to all the humans, all the animals, and all the spirit beings. Wherever these beings exist, you see them in your mind as this symbol, like a hologram. And in that way you don't you overcome the fixating result of thinking everything is solid, fixed, and permanent. Like in science, they say it's this way and it's not going to change. <laughs> and this opens you up to the experience of this being all illusory, like an illusion, like your dream state at night. So you don't see this the same way you do your dream. But your dreams are a perfect example of what happens when you move out of the body into the next world. It's going to be more like the dream state and not like this, not death. Will still appear the same, but different. <laughs> so we use this deity or any of the other deities. There's 100 in each category of the five Diana Buddha categories of emotion. And the white Tara is the one for, like the medicine Buddha, producing a long life, good health, and wealth. So, in our lineage, we really do a lot of tar practice. Green tar, white tar, red tar, blue tar, yellow tar, 21 other tars, all peaceful, some protectors. But this one, tonight. So, using this white tar, you visualize the sea salvo bomb. I can find it. Long, yeah. Is that what's on the, the poster board? Also? Yeah. Was it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, on the left side. Middle. Oh, here it is. Long. Looks like this. White colored on a red background. But again, like a cookie, 3D. And it looks like this squiggly square where all sides are connected with the sun and moon over it or just a part of it, a dot. And then when you use this, that starts the creation of the all pervasive nature of space. That's what this symbol represents space. Bomb, B A M, or B A M, they say. Tibetan, because they can't say the bomb. The bomb. Then this sound creates the, the mandala of this deity. And when you apply this, you apply it to every human animal spirit as this deity in your mind. You see your whole mind filled with these. Then, once that 
is required in your mind, that creates the mantra. And the mantra of the white Tara is Om Tara, Tutari, Ture, Mama Ayu, Punye Jana, Uti Guru, Doha. And this mantra is shown with six spheres, so she's called the Tara of the seven spheres, or sometimes six spheres. The first sphere is the energy program of the mantra and her Tara. And that starts with the seeds over long, and then eight spokes come out from that with the own Tara, to Tara, Ture. And then the rest of the mantra creates the wheel around it this way, outside. And that turns into a sphere of energy just behind you, your reach. So above your head and out behind your hand, this sphere. Then as you see the mantra, a yellow, excuse me, a yellow sphere appears, and a green sphere, and a light blue, sky blue sphere, then a white sphere, and then a red sphere, and then a navy blue looks like black sphere. So her sphere is about maybe six feet your reach, or how tall you are. How do you want to think of that? Then each of these spheres, six feet. So six feet yellow, six feet green, six feet more blue, expanding hours, six feet white, six feet red, six feet navy blue. What are these? This is your pure realm where no judgment, no emotion exists. That's the mantra in the seeds of the bomb. Like space. Because this universe is not emotional. It has no judgment program. It's just a life support system. But these are the judgment spheres. This is the arrogant gods and goddesses of all the religions, including Buddhism. <laughs> okay. This is the jealousy of the war and war gods, which we honor greatly. That's the theme of the planet today, war. With our environment and with each other. Then we have the human world, which is the light blue sphere like in the sky where we're very needy on all others. Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, needy. Then the animal is the white sphere, ignorant. The red is the deprived spirits, the greedy one. And this is the psychotic spirit, full of anger and hatred. <laughs> so these are the purpose for you to be the white God. So the healing energy is applied where you are in your relationship, and then to all being this way. And it's in the mantra. So this is Om, Tare, Tu, Tare, Tu, Mama, Ayu, Punya, Chan, Puti, Guru, Shoha. So Om start above your head and Ha below you. Tare, Tu, Tare. Eight spokes. Why eight? Because you have five emotional terrible program mm -hmm. you have body speech and mind doing that makes eight and they're physically mentally and emotionally so that's this inner spirit then apply to the outer realms of emotionality these other dimensions of being tare tu tare tu mama ayu kogi jana putin kuru so this is your dimension. Mm -hmm. Then you integrate it with the heavenly beings, the war of war gods, all the humans, all the animals, all the spirits, and all the psychotic spirits. Mm -hmm. And how you do this is really neat. She's also called the Tara of Seven Eyes. Mm -hmm. The eye in your forehead, your imaginary process, the mental. Then this eye, with one of the mantras, sees heaven, celestial realm. This left eye, war and war god realm. The eye in the palm of this hand, the right hand, human. 
left hand, animal, bottom of the right foot, deprived spirit, bottom of the left foot, psychotic spirit. So you start to put all this together while you're reciting the mantra. And this is called how to do it in Tibetan, which you receive the wall, that's the environment, that's taking refuge and all of that. The loom, which is the vibratory sound of the mantra and the seed syllables, together with the explanation of the text. And whatever practice you're doing with this deity, Dharma, and that is called the tree. We have the wall, the loom, and the tree. This is the tree, and it goes like this. Sit with the back straight and breathe. What three colors, three sounds. Inhale, hear om. White light, inhale, om. Red light through the body, ah. Blue light out to space for everyone, om. Collect these three sounds and these three lights as the nature of the deity into a particle in your heart center. It expands to a small sphere of light and then to a five color sphere inside Vong. Vong sends five colored light which surrounds this like a rainbow of light sphere out to all the lawless deities and protectors either as the refuge tree or around you in vast numbers. They receive the light offering from your heart center and return it into the bomb, and you become Tara, white Tara, of the seven eyes and seven spheres. Right hand open in generosity and a blazing flower of loving kindness, Left hand holding the stem of another lotus by the left ear of altruistic compassion. And on that sphere, sometimes they have a text of the Tara practice. In any case, you become Tara, then you see your mother in front, white Tara. All the animal world, white Tara, all the human world, eight billion humans, Tara, all the infinite number of spirits throughout space, white Tara. And the mind is filled with this symbolic representation, this mandala. Then the mantra appears, the mantra, the spokes, and the wheel, the spear. All Tara, two Tara, two Mama, I, Kodi, John, Bukti, Guru, Go, Ha, Om, Tara, Tu, Tara, Tu, Mama, I, Kodi, John, Bukti, Guru, Go, Ha, Om, Tara, Tu, Tara, Tu, Mama, I, Kodi, John, Bukti, Guru, Go, Ha, Om, Tara, Tu, Tara, Tu, Mama, Om Jara Tutare Tu 
Sam, I, Bodhi, Chan, Bukin, Ku, So, Om Chari, Chari, Chu, Mama, I, Bodhi, Chan, Bukin, Ku, So, Om Chari, Chari, Chu, Mama, I, Bodhi, Chan, Bukin, Ku, So, Om Chari, Chari, Chu, Mama, I, Bodhi, Chan, Bukin, Ku, So, Om Chari, Chari, Chu, Mama, I, Bodhi, Chan, Bukin, Ku, So, Om Jare Jum Jare Tu Om Ai Kodi Jan Dukin Kuru So Om Jare Jum Jare Tu Om Ai Kodi Jan Dukin Kuru So Om Jare Jum Jare Tu Om Ai Kodi Jan Dukin Kuru Om Dari Dari Tu Mama Ai Uyye Jam Tukin Ku Soha Om Dari Dari Tu Mama Ai Uyye Jam Tukin Ku Soha Om Dari Dari Tu Mama Ai Uyye Jam Tukin Ku Soha Om Dari Dari Tu Mama I, Bunye Jan, Bukin Ku, So Ha, Om Jari Jit Jari Tu, Mama I, Bunye Jan, Bukin Ku, So Ha, Om Jari Jit Jari Tu, Mama I, Bunye Jan, Bukin Ku, So Ha, Om Jari Jit Jari Tu, Mama I, Bunye Jan, Bukin Ku, So Ha, Om Jari Jum Jari Tu, Mama Ai, Bunye Jan, Bukin Ku, So Ha. Then you hold your visualization with the bomb in your heart, the mantra, that spear moving, all the mantra sounds creating your energies, enclosing your physical situation. Then in that outer sphere is also the mantra of the Tibetan alphabet, the Sanskrit alphabet, and also the mantra of purification of, we say, um, male and female, male and female deities that are used for purification. And that, that's all in the outer sphere. Then, the gold sphere for the heavenly realms purifies area. The green sphere of the warm war god realms purifies jealousy. The blue sphere purifies the neediness of the human condition. The white sphere the ignorance of the animal world. <clears throat> the red sphere, all of the greeting and deprived spirit world. And the navy blue sphere, all of the hatred and anger of the psychotic sphere. So all six become white time. And when they do, you change the navy blue sphere and fill it with unopened dark blue lotus stones. Mm -hmm. Then the five spirit, dark red lotus stones. Then the animal world, white unopened lotus stones. Human, light blue lotus stones filled. Then war and war gods, green. Then arrogant gods and goddesses of all those realms, gold lotus flowers. Now what the unopened lotus symbolizes is an immature human, full lotus, mature, like Buddha. So 
So this is the potential of all these to be what they really are to begin with and end with Buddha. Om Tari Tu Tari Tu Rama Ani Puni Jan Bhutin Kuru So Om Tari Tu Tari Tu Rama Ani Puni Jan Bhutin Kuru So Om Tari Tu Tari Tu Rama Ani Puni Jan Bhutin Kuru So Om Tari Tari Tu Tari Tu Rama Ani Puni Jan Putting good so hot. Om Dara to Dara to Mama Ike, from me, John. Putting good so hot. Om Dara to Dara to Mama Ike, from me, John. Putting good so hot. Om Dara to Dara to Mama Ike, from me, John. Om Dara Tu Dara Tu Rama Ai Puni Jan Putin Kuru So Om Dara Tu Dara Tu Rama Ai Putin Kuru So Om Dara Tu for all the mantras. That's called realizations code. Now, when you get to the practice, to end the practice, this is how you end. This is how you move into the accomplishment stage. All the unopened dark blue lotus flowers in this six foot wide sphere dissolve into the red. Then all the red on lotus dissolve into the white. Then all the white on lotus buds into the blue, sky blue, light blue. Then all of those in lotus buds into the green. Then all the green lotus buds dissolve into the yellow sphere. So now all these six spheres come into your sphere because that's where they started. All of these emotional energy fields started in the human condition on some planet in our universe. And because of our defective emotional application judgment, when we move from life to life, this is called cyclic existence. And it's all emotionally fabricated in the relative human mind not in the ultimate. The ultimate is what you are symbolizing with you as Tara, with the eight spokes, bomb in the middle of your heart, and the sphere, mantra sphere, enclosing you. When all of these come into the hub, then into the spokes, then into the seas of the wrong, and then disappear completely. Mm -hmm. Void me. Nature of mind. Finally. Do that. Disappear everything into your hearts and you into space. No boundary, no center, no meditation, no judgment. Just relax in the present moment of timeless awareness.
misstated <clears throat> of the accomplishment called timeless awareness is applied to your body, speech, and mind. So I'm going to <clears throat> ring the bell. The sound of the bell is the practice of the deity yoga. When it disappears, that's the realization of the body. Then through mantra, <clears throat> see so this patterning is applied to the speech. So the speech itself is the sound and where it disappears is the result, the effect. Then the mind is the thoughts and the emotional habit, tendency. As they arise, that's the sound of the bell. Where they go, void. Then you reappear for post-meditational application as a white tar, and all sound becomes your mantra, and this world becomes your mandala. Then we dedicate the merit, the virtue of our practice tonight, as applied to all sentient beings, and I'm going to read this dedication prayer. In this way, by the power of these virtuous actions, the love and the love and kindness of my parents to me, and the teachings of the two bodhicitras by my lama, and my commitment to all my Bhajra sisters and brothers, and the connection between myself and all men and women, possessions, and even those of beasts of burden, from which I take milk and yogurt to drink, and the animals whose flesh and blood I eat, to all of these, without leaving one behind, may they quickly reach the sublime and perfect state of Buddhahood. And then we do the dedication prayer on the refuge sheet. Ewa di nirdu dham, chagya chempo tu pir nem, roa ching ching ma lu pam, te sa la ko parsho, sanje kusum nem pai chen ma dham, Chodi Megar Dubai Chim Ma Dong, Kendu Miche Dubai Chim Ma Ki, Sitar Bobong Bobong Juru Parar Shodi. By this virtue, having realized Maha Virgin, and quickly establish all beings without a single exception in this state, by the blessing of the three bodies of the Buddha being accomplished, by the blessing of the truth of the Dharma being unchanging, and by the blessing of the wishes of us, the Sangha being unwavering, may and this dedication prayer be fulfilled. In my Tashi prayer, may all the Lamas have long life, good health, happiness, and prosperity. May all their wishes be fulfilled. In my compassion, may all beings have happiness, the cause of happiness, away from suffering, and the cause of suffering, be established in bliss and equanimity and reach emotional stability as a mature human being. Right now, in this life, here, 